Welcome to the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Kennedy, and I'm here to help you become the very best version of yourself. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. Um, thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, for all of the listeners or, or those that are watching in the moment that are, um, I guess, hardcore fitness fans, which I know we have a lot of people that tune in that are, we probably haven't really had a, a super in-depth or um, really detailed fitness or, or gym kind of um, episode for a while. Um, but today we're super fortunate to be joined by Callum Hintz, who is a IFBB pro in the classic division, which we'll dive into um, in our chat today. But we literally met about five minutes ago. So uh, this is going to be super genuine chat today. But um, Callum, welcome to the show, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for having me. It's exciting. First podcast. First so pod as well. So even better. Mate, um, let's, uh, like I said, I literally met you about five minutes ago. So I'd, I'd love to, to get you know to know you a little bit. So before we dive into the bodybuilding stuff and I guess where you are currently um, in your life and with training and business and whatnot, um, where did it all start for you? So you were just mentioning to me you grew up, or did you grow up on the Gold Coast? Or? Grew up in Brisbane. In Brisbane, yeah. And then yep. moved to Gold Coast like two years ago, so Queensland base. Yep. But yeah, grew up around there. I, I played AFL as Wizard is in Queensland. Really? Like down here it's pretty common obviously yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was playing that when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Then obviously transitioned into training for football. And then it sort of just just evolved into bodybuilding. As Loved the training. I enjoyed things. the training side of things. I enjoyed learning about the sport of bodybuilding, and then it just progressed into like taking bodybuilding full time. So, how old are you now? Twenty four now. Twenty four. It's interesting. I, I like. Uh, it's funny when you hear stories like that. Mine was very similar. Like I got into the gym for basketball and football, um, and then just quickly just became more passionate about the gym than what I was Same about the sports side. And it was yeah. almost, it almost took me like a few years to actually just admit to myself. Mm. or to anyone else that like oh, I actually fucking way prefer just the gym side yeah. and, instead of the actual sport bit um, so what age were you when you first kind of got into lifting would have been like 16, 17 I think so in school and I was like I'll just put a bit of size on in the off season of footy mm. and then I think I started taking it seriously about maybe when I was 18 or so just after school Yeah. and then after I saw a bit of results I was like alright this is probably my, my go to now and then stop playing footy and then it's what's that been maybe 6 years or 7 years of serious training mm-hmm were you, were you naturally, like before getting into the gym or even early days in the gym, what was like your frame like? You t- more was, of an ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph? Like, yeah. I, I've always had like small joints, so I was really, I was pretty skinny, Yeah, but athletic. But I tend to grow pretty easily. Like I didn't have to push food too high to be able to like grow right. mass. Interesting. And then, yeah, you probably wouldn't guess that I used to be like a little 60 kilo, like yeah. 18 year old, but yeah, as time went on, I just grew. And then before you know just it, I'm keep body growing. Yeah. yeah, legit. <laughs> That's awesome. Something I find um, intriguing asking people who are super into their, their training, particularly that are competing, is when you look back now, like what are, what are some of the main things that you kind of almost laugh at in terms of your approach to training? And, and maybe you kind of left from some from real respectable resources right from the start, but was there anything in particular that stands out to you now where you're just like, fuck, I can't believe I genuinely used to think that that was going to work mm. or even with nutrition as well? I used to overtrain. Like I would train seven days a week. I'd hit like stupid amounts of volume. Like I'd, I'd spend probably an hour training just triceps. <laughs> then I'd go hit biceps. Like I'd do like one tricep day. I'd hit just triceps for an hour. Then the next day just biceps and then just chest when I was like probably 16. And it, it sort of worked, but wouldn't have worked for long not exactly optimal apart. yeah but nah I've always I think I overtrained early on and I look at it now I'm like holy shit lucky I learned not to because I'd be mm. like broken now yeah Um, and I probably over pushed the diet too like after I started growing I was like alright I'm just going to keep pushing my calories up through the roof up. Yeah, okay. and there was a point where I was just force feeding like crazy and yeah. Like, yeah I grew but I wasn't like lean yeah, and putting I wasn't on a bit digesting stuff with it too, too yeah. well but you live and you learn yeah and now I know what I'm doing it's sort of yeah you can sort of teach others that are in that position where I was to do right it the right down way. the right path. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's the rewarding bit, isn't it? Um, was like, what were the resources that I guess you kind of first learned from? Like, you know, I know for myself and um, I'm sure so many other people that are super into their training, they're listening is pretty similar. Like it was bodybuilding.com. I was you read all the fucking day. magazines. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then you'd find a few people on social media. So was there, was there anyone or any resource in particular that you found, um, that you were getting a lot of your kind of content from? I was waiting for you to say bodybuilding.com. That's yeah. where I started. I remember my first program was like, I think like a Steve Cook program that yeah. was on the website. Yeah. 
it was called, what was it? It was like called like Big Man on Campus. Big Man on Campus. So I was, was just about to say that, yeah. yeah. And I did it. It was basic stuff, but like <laughs> I would follow it religiously. And then obviously as time went on, I was like, okay, I can do more. And then I went obviously doing a lot more volume than that. Yeah. Um, and then coming up, I was a big fan of like Callum Vimoga as well. Yeah. He was massive in like, I guess the whole social media side mm. of things. And then I think the more I got into bodybuilding, I've sort of veered towards a competitive like bodybuilding side of things to sort of learn other than just like social media and like basic fitness based stuff. Yeah. So as time goes on, I've just learned from heaps of different sources. Really yeah. Is it, is there certain athletes or competitors now that you kind of, I wouldn't say like aspire to, to be like, but like, is there people that you kind of really zero in and zero in on in terms of like their approach to their, whether it be the off season, their comp prep or, or people that you take inspiration from? Um, no, I have, I guess people obviously look at Chris Bumstead and stuff who are the yeah. top of classic physique, which is what I want to do. That's like who I look at for inspiration and motivation, but everyone's sort of got their own approach. Like if you try and copy someone else's approach to yeah. training or dieting or whatever, it's no not one size fits all. So yeah. I found my own sort of, I guess, way of doing things that works best, but I'd use other people that are at the top of what I do just for, I guess, motivation really. But yeah. Mm. What, um, so you, we were chatting quickly before we hit record about, um, how many times you competed, which I, I find fucking impressive that you got your pro card after just three shows so what was the um run us through like i guess the process of that first show and you know making the decision to step on stage was it something that was kind of like completely left of field with in terms of like whether like in your friends group or like yeah. kind of what made you make the decision to do that i've been training well my first show was i think 21 so as we were saying before right before covid happened i did my first show and i like i knew i wanted to compete but i don't think i believed in myself enough to be able to do well mm -hmm. and then i think i mentioned and that was it, in classic straight that away. was in classic <laughs> ivy as well um and then i think i mentioned it to my first coach who offered to coach me for free for my first show he's like yeah you do well and i was like all right i'll do it <laughs> and then after i did it i was like all right this is like this is what i want to do yeah and that was yeah two and a half years ago now and since then i've done nothing but like prepare for body yep. shows so i was just sort of i knew i wanted to do it but i knew that reassurance it was like what i wanted to do mm. I guess. such a big dopamine hit once you kind of step off that stage for the first time as well and it's like yeah. instantly you're just like fuck all right, i need to get bigger delts i need yeah. to like work on this want to come in like more yeah. conditioning and and it's whatnot crazy because even after this show same sort of idea you win and you're sort of you're happy with yourself but like i think a lot of the time you'll look what's next critiquing and you want to get better mm. it's not like a lot of the time i won't soak stuff in enough until probably later on because i'm just ready to hit the next goal i guess yeah but it's good because it keeps you moving forward so 100 percent for for those that don't uh, or aren't aware of like what the classic division is, because I know for even though a lot of people are super interested in health and fitness, and I'm sure a lot of people listening that are, are really kind of uh, into their training and whatnot, but probably still don't have a great idea of how the bodybuilding federations work and the different divisions and whatnot. So can you explain um, to the listener a bit about what classic physique kind of entails? Yeah, so classic sort of reminiscent of like the old classic bodybuilding like the 70s 80s like arnold style stuff in a way frank zane and yeah, all those guys yeah. yeah like you have we have a weight limit that we have to stay under on stage per our height um so it sort of stops you from being oversized i guess in terms if you compare it to like an open bodybuilder like mm. Ronnie Coleman where or more whatever. size is better type yeah, thing, yeah yeah but you obviously want to have enough size that you're like i guess not looking like a natural human who's just walking around the streets but yeah. it's not trying to look bloated and out of proportion as some people like to put it too so yeah just like that middle range between i guess a men's physique style and an open <coughs> bodybuilding and they sort of emphasize a little bit more on like your symmetry and your shape and your v taper and all that sort of stuff as well so yeah what's the range. um what's the weight limit for you for stage? me as an amateur it was 93 and then now as a pro you're allowed an extra five or so kilo so 99 I'm allowed to be on stage, I believe. What do you walk around at usually, like in the off season? Uh, it's always it's always going up in the off season because I'm growing. But at the moment, I'm about 103. Right. Um, I'm I want to sort of push for like a lean 110 kilos, and I think if I start prep around that weight, I'll be able to make 99. Yeah. And, and to I'm, be absolutely yeah. peeled, yeah. And you want to be at the top end of your weight limit, obviously, so that you're yeah. not, not undersized. Undersized, but, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So you did that first show, um, and then the second show was. The qualifier for the one you just yeah, won recently, yeah, yeah, which was like what April, yeah, start of April I think or end of March something like that. Yeah, how how far out from that one did you start your prep? Uh, right on New Year's Day, so okay, 
like I guess well, I was meant to do a season B show, which was like Octoberish last year, mm. but I got cancelled because of COVID. So I had you how far into prep were you? I think it was seven weeks out, and I've been oh, prepping shit. since about May. So Fuck. cutting since May, then with that show, I kept cutting for like another eight or so weeks mm-hmm. just to make the most of it, and then we sort of stayed around a maintenance sort of phase until New Year's, and then cut again. Yeah. So in general, it was I've, I was probably in like a deficit for over a year. Or at least that maintenance, lower calories for a year Fuck leading up to that show. That. Um, with the classic physique, like as we just touched on, more of like an aesthetic look, um, you know, the, the tiny waist, the bead taper and all that type of stuff. So what adjustments do you have to make to your training and nutrition or, or just lifestyle in general, I guess, to not get to the point where you are losing that kind of aesthetic t- uh, look and, and you're not just getting just too big, I guess? Mm. I think a part of it is going to be genetics, like your genetic shape and the way your body structure sort of is, I guess, helps me out because I've got a small waist naturally and small mm-hmm. joints. Um, but also you just got to make sure you're training to keep everything symmetrical. So you don't want to have like massive arms and no legs or yeah, massive yeah. legs, no chest. Everything yeah. it should be like really symmetrical and in balance. Um, and then obviously keeping your waist small, a lot, a lot of that comes down to core control and then digestion. If your digestion is not good in the off season, your stomach's going to expand and you're going to yeah. sort of get a bit more bloated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you want to make sure you can control your core as well. So I yeah. just try that's Plenty why I, I like posing practice and, and your posing practice yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's why your food sources are important, I guess, too, because you don't want anything that's going to bloat you and make your stomach uh, Ex- over time. Stand a bit. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. Run us through um, what. Is there, ma- is there many major differences, um, obviously, apart from the energy expenditure, but between your training in off-season compared to your during prep? Mm. Uh, later ends of prep, training volume decreases yeah. just to aid in recovery. Um, I'm, I try and do similar stuff. Like, I try and keep my strength and the load I'm using similar. Throughout prep, yeah. Um, I try and keep stuff as close as possible to the off-season in prep, just yeah. allowing a little bit more space for recovery when your food's low and everything. But Do you find your pushing movements are the first to kind of drop or, or at least start uh, to suffer a bit? Or is there any, any kind of lifts or movements in particular that you find struggle during prep? I'd probably say... Not so much certain muscle groups, but more so just certain like compound movements where you're doing, like I say, a squat or a leg press. I find they will I'll fatigue quicker just mm. because my energy is not there. So you'll sort of get five reps out, and then I'll be like, oh, you lose that leverage as well from the body fat and whatnot. I, I found yeah. yeah, overhead pressing, bench pressing, they, they were two for me that like that was kind of the indicator of how much mm. strength and muscle I was retaining. As soon as they started to drop a little bit, that's when I knew it was kind of like pretty deep yeah, in prep. exactly. And I think it's more, not so much your strength goes, but just your endurance to push out like more than 10 reps if you need to. Mm. I find you do like five reps and like, oh, it's easy. And then next minute you hit a wall because your body's just like starved. Fuck so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I just try and keep stuff pretty much the same the whole way. Or well, I, I aim to at least. Yeah. But as close as you can keep your training volume and load to that when you're in prep, the more muscle you're going to retain. What's the split look like um, during prep or, or even at the moment in terms of how you're breaking up each session throughout the week? My split now, so what am I doing? So I do, I've got chest biceps Monday, Tuesday's hamstrings and back, Wednesday is shoulders and tricep, Thursday rest, Friday quads, Saturday's back. So I've got a lot of posterior movements in there because that's like a point that I need to bring up. Bring up a bit. And then in prep, it was relatively similar, actually, this last prep. Yeah. Different, uh, slightly different split, but it was sort of catering around hamstrings, glute, back, just because that's where I need to work on. Mm. Interesting. What, um, with the nutrition side of things, what what type of approach do you do you follow um, with the food side? For myself, so I, I'm working with a coach, uh, Matt Jansen overseas, who mm-hmm. does all my programming and meal planning and stuff, and he's just got me on a like a very rigid meal plan which i enjoy mm-hmm. i i don't i try not to push rigid meal plans on everyone like yeah because it's sort of not always the general population yeah because yeah. you'll sort of do it two weeks and get sick of it a lot of the time but mm. i'm weird i enjoy it yeah i don't really like variables and i don't like stuff that's going to mess with my digestion so my what i'm doing now i'm on i think six or seven meals a day and it's just real basic chicken rice beef eggs fish greens all the basic stuff and then i've allow myself one off off plan meal a week where me and my partner go out for normally like a pasta or something on yeah. the weekend. But for me, it's very rigid. But yeah, I try to steer away from that with clients and yeah. I guess everyday people because it's not always going to 
going to work. Mm, yeah, I guess it just just go, kind of person to person depends what suits, well, yeah, suits the individual best. Exactly. There's no magic formula. It's just preference. Nah. It's just whatever you can stick to. Do you have an idea of? Um, obviously, you mentioned you're sticking to more more so of a meal plan or set meal plan. But do you have an idea of what your calories kind of get to throughout off season in comparison to where you finish up at? Treat before comp. Yeah, well, it's always sort of progressive. So as as every off season goes yeah, on, I'm growing. And stuff, so yeah. my body's gonna, I'm gonna be able to absorb more calories as I get heavier. Now I'm on, I think mid four thousands. Again, I leave the numbers up to my coach, but it's mm. about four thousand, four and a half thousand a day on training days now. But it'll get way higher than that as we just progressively. That's now. Up. That's now. And so that's what you were saying. Nine weeks per uh, show. I think we're ten weeks tomorrow from the show. So shit, pretty high still. It's high, yeah. Um, protein super high. Like carbs, okay. fats aren't massive. Okay, yet, right. But it's there's room to push it up more. So yep. yeah. What um? How much of what? How much protein are you taking in at the at moment? At the moment, it's high three hundreds. I Fuck. believe they're so very high. Super high. Yeah, and I'm like, it's sort of, I think more of like an old school approach. You see a yeah. lot of like old school bodybuilders used to push Certain really amounts. high protein. Yeah. Whereas now there's a lot of studies and stuff that say you don't need end. so much, but I feel for me it works. And yeah. As long as I digest fine, like I'm happy to. Yeah, to you continue to help with hunger and whatnot as well when you're exactly. at that leaner levels of body fat. Exactly, yeah. I think when I first started pushing protein high, I wouldn't digest it very well. Yeah. Like I would. It'd, I'd feel bloated, stomach would feel a bit weird, but you sort of adapt over time. Yeah. And once your body weight goes up, you require more protein anyway. So mm. it works now. But yeah, it's, it's high for comparing to, I guess, a lot of people who aren't trying to be professional bodybuilders. <laughs> professional like bodybuilders, probably yeah. Having half of that now, it'll still be probably yeah. too much. But yeah, that, yeah, high now. Yeah. Run us through the um, the experience of, of you know, winning your pro card, um, the most recent show, and, and I guess what it was like in terms of like, a huge, huge achievement, and then, but then also, you know, where does that fit in with the plan of where you're kind of wanting to go? Mm. It, it's it, it's exciting, and it's still sort of exciting to think about now. But it hasn't. I don't think it'll properly sink in until I've done my first pro show. Like, yeah, I got my pro card. I was like, I just got off stage. I was like, I'm happy, but I, it was just weird, a weird feeling because it's something that I've wanted for so long, and now I had it. And it, not that it was a letdown, but it was sort of like almost like an emptiness. Oh, not so much an emptiness, but I was like. It's just like an overwhelming feeling so much that you don't feel anything. Does that make sense? Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. I'm very happy about it, but I think my mind naturally goes straight to, all right, what's next? What's next? So I won. I was like, yeah, cool, but now I want to do a pro show. And I remember messaging my coach the day after the show, and I was like, all right, what's the plan from here? I want to do a show uh, mid-2023. I want to grow. What's the plan? What do we do? And yeah. he sort of had to like calm me down a bit and be like, just, <laughs> just enjoy yourself and relax a bit. And I was like, oh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very like, I've got the habit of just wanting to do the next thing, I think. Goal so. driven. Yeah, which again I think is a good thing because it stops you becoming complacent. But mm. you obviously want to learn to enjoy the moment a bit. Mm. And for a lot of people, won't really understand like how what, how big of a I guess a, a deal it is to achieve the pro card. So, um, how many competitors are kind of in the division, and then how many pro cards they give out, just so everyone kind of understands. Yeah, uh, how many did it? So they give out one pro card per, uh, well, two pro cards per year. So one in season A, one in season B at the end of the year. Um, per category and just the winner of the overall gets a pro card so f- there'll be two new classic physique pros in Australia this year so me and then whoever wins season B okay uh, and this year and I think what did we have there was probably I don't know how many guys are on stage but there was a short class and a tall class mm-hmm. and then the winner of the short and tall went in the overalls and the winner of that got their pro card but overall yeah there would have been maybe 30 or so yeah all up maybe maybe a bit more I don't really know the numbers but yeah, it's huge. It's, it's slim. The it's super interesting too because it's just uh, it's just one of those sports where you, you know, and people say it all the time, even in team sports. But in bodybuilding, you really can only focus on what you can control because yeah. literally, there's fucking nothing you can do about mm. how jacked or shredded someone else turns up. Exactly. It's all about like just, and that's what I found. So the discipline side of it, of knowing that like the result literally comes down to whether or not you do or don't mm. do the work and stay yeah. stay dedicated to yeah, it. Yeah, against yourself. Like and you, yeah. even if you think you deserve to win, the judges decide. So May it's not, not like yeah. You, it's not like you can be like, "Hey, you should pick me." You just got to be your best. Yeah, but I think it's good because it sort of makes the whole sport more. It's an individual sport, but it makes everyone sort of come together as a bit of a team. A bit of a community. You're, yeah, you're doing your own thing, but it's not like you're fighting over like a, a footy and trying to win against each other. You're doing your own thing and just relying on judges to choose who wins. So everyone yeah. sort of gets around each other a little bit more, and it's more of like a team within a individual sport. Yeah, I reckon as well that the fact that everyone has the understanding of like what each person has 
gone through or, or put in the effort mm. they've had to put in just for that kind of one moment. So yeah. it's like you just, it's such a like I said before, it's such a big dopamine dopamine yeah. hit. It's it's an awesome feeling. Bodybuilding is pretty niche. Like it's pretty rare that you come across someone else who takes bodybuilding serious just every day. Yeah. So when you come to the show and then everyone's there doing the same thing, it's like a big community of people doing the same thing. It's sick. Like, yeah. <laughs> I remember before the overalls, me and Matt who won the the short the shorter class of classic. We What's just, last name? Uh, Matt Orchid, I think I said his last name right. Okay, yeah. I don't really know his last name, but he, it was me and him backstage pumping up before the show, and we were just like having a chat. Like yeah. it was us going head to head to see who got that pro card, but we were just sort of hanging out and pumping yeah. up and laughing around, which is sick. That's awesome. Whereas I think any other sort of individual sport, you sort of like, there's a little bit of animosity or whatever, and like you're yeah. trying to beat each other. But yeah, that's the weird thing about the sport. I guess it's mm. pretty random. But what are I guess some of the things that you focus on on a daily basis, or whether you have some form of like. Uh, mental routines whether it's like meditating journaling whatever it is or, or your goal setting process but like how do you really kind of keep yourself in check when when things start to get really fucking hard um i think it's routine really hey like if you have your set routine it becomes mindless like i'll most of my days i'll start the day off pretty similar i'll get up cardio go for a walk have my meal do my stretching get meals in have a routine that's in place so that you don't question what you're doing it's just like mindlessly do what you need to do and do it well Mm. I think if there's a lot of variables, you can be like, oh, okay, this this cardio session might not fit in today. I can do it tomorrow. Too whatever. much choice. Whereas if I think, for me, I prioritize my training and my bodybuilding process over everything. So like yeah. I'll put that first put in routine and then I don't have to question it. It's just, mm. just do it no matter how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. So first pro show uh, coming up, middle of next year, you say? Or yeah, towards middle towards the end? Probably like, I think about August-ish. Roughly. Okay. It'll yeah. depend because they're all overseas shows. Yeah. So I'm gonna we're gonna move overseas to probably America around Easterish next year, and I'd permanently. Like to, uh, at least for the year. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I'd like to just do my whole prep there, so I got no yeah, distractions yeah, yeah. and travel and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then it's just that's a exciting. Of, it's very exciting, but I just got to choose which shows, I guess. In yeah. the States, and I guess wherever, whatever country we go to, there's shows all the time, pro shows. Yeah. So I'm going to have a look at the fixture for next year, decide which shows I want to do and then sort of base myself in areas that are nearby so I can just prep and not have anything that can throw me off. But what's what's the criteria of um, getting a spot on the Olympia stage? So you pretty much just have to win a pro show or one of the bigger pro shows. Yep. If you're a winner, you automatically qualify. Mm-hmm. And then they've got like a point system as well. So say if you come second in say five shows, you don't win, but the points sort of add up. Accumulate. They, they, there's a set number of people on points that let in too. So obviously you just want to do pro shows and win. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do the best you can. And then yeah. Yeah. And that's, the, that's I'm assuming that's the goal, is to that's get on the, the, on the Olympia that's stage. The yeah. yeah, as weird as it sounds to say that, like I sort of say it, I'm like, well, that sounds a bit cocky and arrogant. I always think that, but my the goal is definitely to... Oh, you're in the mix now. It's like, there's no reason yeah. why you can't. Yeah, yeah the, my goal is 100% to get up there and I want to win the Olympia. Yeah. Like, it's not going to happen straight away, but that's definitely my goal. Yeah. It's just now just continuing to progress, grow, do the pro shows, learn, get yeah. feedback, get better. But So if you go into that first pro show and win, you automatically get your placing your yeah. place for the Olympia. Would, yeah. you, would you then just put all your focus on the Olympia or would you compete in between then to get more time on stage as a pro? I think if I won a show and I was going straight to it, if there was shows that are convenient leading up to the show, I'd probably do maybe one or two more just to learn what methods of peaking work yeah. right for me. But that has sort of come down to how well I peaked for the first show. If everything went perfectly, we'd probably almost just keep things Rinse in and repeat. check and then just do it for the big show. But yeah. The more shows, the better because I love doing it. So as long as my body is not worn down, I'd compete as many shows as I can really. Yeah. What uh, what type of approach did you take this the most recent time around with, with the peaking process? Was it much different to kind of, was there many variables that were completely different to what you've been doing? Nah, I find with, to make, like I guess the more simple you can keep things in your peak week and leading up to show the better because there's less variables that can throw your body off. So we I think that's where so many out, people uh, fuck up. Well, people think there's like a magic sort of way you can make your body go from not ready to ready in like a week. Yeah. But if you're ready and you're doing everything rigidly, all you need to do is just make some mild adjustments to bring mm. yourself to be prime on the day. Yeah. So really what did we do? We just sort of cut food back a little bit for the first half of the week. Carbs are a bit lower, depleted a little bit and then carved up just moderately towards the show. That was pretty much all we had to do. Water intake stayed pretty similar or how did you approach yeah, that? Yeah, we pushed water a little higher at the start of the week and then it catered, tailored back a little bit I think two days out from the show, but we didn't like have to fully drop water or anything. It was just less water in the system. So we're not holding on to any water mm. or, or being full in the stomach or anything. But yeah, no, I find the more crazy stuff you have to do, the less 
likely you are to be able to have full control over your body. Yeah, hundred percent. And like you said, if you, if you look ready a week or two out, then you're there's ready, not ready. much you need to change. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. problem is, as as you said, it's so many people just come in not ready, thinking that that last week mm. is what's going to make the difference. That's it. And a lot of people say, oh yeah, once I cut water or once I carb up, I'm going to look like this. But if you don't look like that <laughs> no, when you're, you're in not. the gym the week before, like your body's not just going to morph. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where do, where do you uh, see at the moment, like in terms of your progression now, like is it just continually adding more size? Is there certain muscle groups that you feel like need to be put, put more work in than others for you to get to the point where you feel like you'd be competitive enough to win the Olympia? Yeah, so overall I think I mostly just need size all over. Being a new weight cap of about 99 kilos, I was just under 90 on stage uh, this last show. So just under ninety. I was eighty nine, eighty eight ish. Shit. Yeah, and I was obviously like depleted and yeah, yeah, like yeah. flat. Yeah. Um. But now, yeah, I can be about ninety nine ish if I'm right Fuck. now. So it's another ten kilos of stage weight. So I just got to grow all over. Um. I've been from feedback. I'm fairly symmetrical, but I need a little bit more work on my back, and probably just through my hamstrings and quads as well. But most of it's just bringing mass up in balance all over. So I'm at the yeah. top of that 99, 99 kilo weight cut, which. Yeah, 10 kilos from a show significant a difference so I got plenty of especially room when you're like yeah when you're sh- like completely yeah. shredded yeah yeah um ehp um obviously yeah. there's one thing we, we kind of had in common which is you know um kind of how we eventually teed this up mm-hmm. um recently signed with ehp so pretty excited about that and, and like kind of what over the years what have you kind of found obviously for everyone listening you know i've talked about this so many times on the show before the supplements are as the name would suggest there to supplement your training and nutrition if that's not locked in then then you're not going to see any magical results from subs but what type of uh supplement i guess regime you kind of following on a daily basis at the moment yeah at the moment so i'm not actually using any protein powder at the moment which is weird like i've been getting all my protein i can still smacking in that much protein i have a lot of chicken like my chicken and beef bills through the roof (laughs) Um, i'll go through heaps but which is sort of weird, but I always have amino acids in the morning before I do my cardio or during cardio. I have that again post workout too. I have I'm be having like powdered greens as well just to help get enough fiber yeah. in, um, and then a good pre workout. I don't really like super high stimulant pre workouts, yeah, okay. so I've been having the you know, pride, obviously the pride yeah, yeah. pre workout, which is not super high stim, but it's enough no. to like get you going. Yeah, no crash yeah. either, which I found so so good with it. Yeah, and obviously taste pretty solid like it's the new, stuff to the taste new good. tropic side of it as well i found really beneficial like in terms of the the focus the mental clarity and yeah. focus is what i found different or better than than a lot of other pre's that i'd tried previously yeah, i'd prefer that over like a a really stimmy pre that's high bed high alanine caffeine, just fucking just like, itching everywhere and shit you get, yeah i'd yeah i'd prefer to feel energized but like smooth and focused instead of just like ping off my head on like due amounts of caffeine yeah 100 uh, percent. yeah so it worked out well that we signed with them because okay sick that's like what i'd I'm good timing use, so yeah, yeah. It works really well yeah that's awesome what do you what do you think uh is the biggest misconception or, or i guess misunderstanding from from the outside in about bodybuilding in terms of just someone who, who really has no idea about bodybuilding and no real real interest and and maybe not even into their their health and fitness that much but whether it's from talking to friends or, or people that have kind of been interested in your journey like what do you find is one of the biggest kind of misconceptions about it all um, I think a lot of, well, it, I guess it is true in some senses, but a lot of people think that bodybuilding is a, a very, like a vain sort of sport. And for a lot of people it is. But I think if you look at most bodybuilders that take it seriously, they don't really care how they look in the eyes of other people other so people. much. You're not, we're not training to look shredded and get attention. We're sort of training to, it's a sport. So you want to get up there and win and hit the criteria that you need to hit to place and win shows mm. um like a lot of the time bodybuilders so even me sometimes i like to cover up if i'm out, outdoors because people give you weird looks I'm like, what's this big bloated <laughs> guy doing? um and I, but i think a lot of people just sort of look at it and be like oh they just want to look big for attention and get girls and all this stuff but like it's the complete op- you, don't get, you don't get girls from bodybuilding <laughs> like yeah. it's a complete opposite but yeah i think when you take it seriously for me at least i do it purely just because i enjoy training and lifting stuff and then i enjoy having a goal obviously being on stage to work towards instead of just trying to look pretty. Mm. But I think it sort of starts, you want to look good when you first start training. Like you'd start off, be like, all right, I want to get a six pack. I want to get bigger arms. Yeah. But if you end up going the bodybuilding side, I think it completely just flips on its head and it's like the opposite. Yeah. Outside of, uh, outside of bodybuilding, um, which I'm assuming there's not a great deal of your time spent outside of bodybuilding <laughs> no, anyway, really. from what we've talked about so far is what, uh, you get up to much interested in much outside of the, out of the sport. Funny. Cause I don't like, 
I and I'm happy about it. It might sound a little bit sad, but bodybuilding is like everything. I mean, yeah. It's when I was younger, I played footy, and I was like, all right, I want to be a professional football player. That was my everything. Mm-hmm. And then I switched to bodybuilding. I was like, all right, now I want to be a professional bodybuilder and win the Olympia. So that sort of becomes everything. And I'm like, I guess multitasking. I can't multitask, and that just sort of shows it. Like <laughs> I choose one thing and go all in on that. Yeah. So my business revolves around fitness and training in the gym. My yeah. time if I'm not in the gym is a lot of time spent studying or learning about bodybuilding or how I can help my clients more um, or watching bodybuilding shows and podcasts and stuff as yeah. well. So it's pretty much all I do. And yeah, as, as sad as it might sound, like I'm happy with it. So yeah, it's, well, it's what it requires to fucking get to that level yeah. of success. And it doesn't have to be like that. Like you can be successful and have other things that you work on, but it's just, that's the way I like to do things. Way you operate. Just chuck everything in the one basket. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any mentors or, or people that you kind of maybe not look up to, but like take advice from or, or kind of bounce ideas off? Obviously, your coach, but is there anyone else that you've over the years or even at, at currently that you kind of um, go to for, for advice or just to speak with? Not, uh, not that I have one go to person to learn from, but there's so many people that I can like credit little things that I've learned along the way to. I think back on when we lived on the Gold Coast, there were so many, I guess, bodybuilders who were either pros or people that took it seriously that I've learned so many little things from and then little bits of advice just sort of come together and make like one big sort of bunch of advice yeah. that learned. But I don't think I've ever had like one sort of mentor or anything. A lot of my knowledge has come from just little bits and pieces from different people. Like yeah. I've, had, I've had posing coaches, I've had prep coaches, I've had like just people who've helped me with I guess the technical side of technique in the gym, but mm-hmm. I think overall it's just been like a big combo of a bunch of stuff really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mate, you've absolutely fucking crushed it for your first podcast. I'm impressed. I reckon, I reckon you're taking the piss. I reckon you do, you've done this plenty of times. Nah, I like to talk though, but. <laughs> what, uh, just, just to close out for, for someone listening at the moment that, that wants to try their hand at, at bodybuilding for the first time, um, just in your opinion and you know, every competitor's probably got a different experience and different advice, but from your perspective, like what advice would you give to someone that is, that is wanting to step on stage for the first time? I think just give it a crack. Like don't doubt yourself. The amount of people I speak to who are younger and they're not sure if they're ready to compete and they'll sort of hold back, which is what I did as well. I wish I started earlier getting on stage, but I think if you enjoy the process of training and you're doing it for the enjoyment of it, not just for attention or likes or Instagram, whatever, um, give it a crack and, you're going to learn from it. If you didn't enjoy it, cool, now you know. If you did enjoy it, you're probably going to do what I did and then go from zero to 100 and just put everything into it and you're going to love it. So mm. I think it's just jump in, give it a go and see if it's for you. And if it's not, cool. Yeah. Worst case, <laughs> yeah. worst case you got to do something else, whatever. But yeah, just give it a crack, really. Love it. Well, look, man, appreciate you coming in. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to watching your journey and, and hopefully, yeah, wish you all the success and I'm looking forward to, to seeing how you go over the next few years, man. So thanks for coming in. It. Thanks for having me on. It was fun. Absolute pleasure. And for everyone uh, who's tuned into this episode, thank you, firstly. And secondly, if you've enjoyed today's show or you know someone that would enjoy it, we'd love for you to either share the link with a friend. Um, otherwise, take a screenshot of this episode on your phone, share it on your Instagram story, tag mm. myself, Tag the big man. I'll have all the links to his socials and whatnot in the in the show notes. Um, but yes, really appreciate you tuning in and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already.